Ginny, I, I, I want to, I guess, bring up one point that I made. I don't know what other proof Republicans in the Senate need to understand that the Democrats are not operating in good faith. When someone else is not operating in good faith, you don't owe it to them to compromise to their demands at all. Right. And in this situation, Republicans can do no right in the Democrats' eyes. And I think something that really has opened up my eyes and that should open up everyone's eyes, when you have mainstream media reporters saying, hold on a second, this has become very political. When you have people like Jake Tapper, Mika and Joe saying, the Democrats have really mishandled this one. Let's take a step back. That's how you know that something is seriously wrong. The tone from the administration, the tone from congressional Republicans on the Hill has been so appropriate, so fair. They have given her four or five different platforms, like you said earlier, for her to come forward and give this testimony. She and her lawyers have chosen to be very flaky and very noncommittal. Right. And I, I think, too, I mean, we had Senator Gillibrand say today uh, that Christine Blasey Ford shouldn't participate in this, quote, sham hearing. I mean, that's that's quite a different tone. Not, it's not only a different tone than the Democrats were taking early this week. That's very troubling to hear that she thinks due process, and that's what this investigation in the Senate is, from the committee is, that she thinks due process in this way is a sham. Well, everything that the left is saying about this is very troubling. You know, on Twitter, I've seen so many tweets from people, including verified accounts, who are saying, you know what, even if Brett Kavanaugh is innocent, even if he hasn't done a thing, this is good because you know what, it'll help us topple the patriarchy. And I say, wait a second, think about your husbands, your fathers, your sons. This could completely backfire on you. There's also a sentiment that, you know what, Brett Kavanaugh was Trump's pick. This is Trump's guy. This was deserved, you know, and this negatively impacts Trump. So this is what they all deserve. And that, to me, is incredible to think about, that they're going to look at it through that lens instead of saying, let's hear both sides and let's move on. Right. And, and I, I think, too, it's, it, I mean, it's beyond irony. I don't even want to point out the irony. I just want to point out how sad it is that Democrats claim that they're championing women. They claim they want to be a voice for sexual assault victims, but by peddling this narrative that we owe it to any woman who levies an allegation of sexual abuse, we owe it to her to believe her, whether or not she has any proof or any evidence, any corroboration, nothing to tell us beyond what she's saying, that what she's saying is true, that actually hurts real victims of real sexual abuse because if we believe every woman it's going to become a political tool. These allegations, once something becomes a political tool, people don't listen to it the same. They tune it out and they ignore it because they assume it's just politics. And that's going to cause real victims of real abuse to be ignored again. Yeah, you know, you make great points on that. This could be a nuclear bomb that severely impacts and hinders the Me Too movement. Many of people are already saying that the Me Too movement has overcorrected already. If this, you know, if they keep playing politics with this like they are, both the Democrats and Ms. Ford and her lawyers, uh, this could severely affect all women, women who really have true stories to share.